Welcome to the Club 120 Networker Team Philosophy where I'm going to walk you through what exactly it is that we stand for and how we are going to help you uh, build your business. What are the beliefs that you need to have in order to make the system work over the next uh, 6 to 12 months as you part with us on this journey. So first of all, we are a group of unconventional entrepreneurs. We don't believe in sacrificing time with family in order to build a six-figure business in 12 months. And uh, after having coached over 2,500 people, I know that most people don't have a lot of time to build a side hustle, a side project, a side business. And so we need to make sure that um, we're not sacrificing time with those uh, we love in the process of trying to build our dream. In fact, we believe that uh, we believe in using an unconventional approach to building a six-figure business. And uh, we're going to focus on 10 core commitments uh, in the form of daily spas. Daily spas is nothing more than a, a daily simple productive action that, although may appear to be insignificant, is going to help you create exponential results. We're going to get into that. And if you look in the dictionary, you'll find that the term that defines what we do is a quantum leap. That's a word you're going to hear a lot in the side of Club 120 Networker. We are a select group of entrepreneurs and we are challenging the status quo. We don't want to be part of the statistics in the industry. We want you to be part of the people that actually get what you set out to achieve as you uh, build your business, uh, especially if you do it online. We are Club 120 Networkers. And uh, just to define a quantum leap, a quantum leap is a radical approach for achieving an explosive growth in your results with far less effort. I hope that excites you and I hope that's something that you really want to be a part of and build for yourself. Now, you do not make a quantum leap by doing certain things. In fact, you make a quantum leap by doing things in a certain way. And uh, we're going to show you what that certain way looks like. It's not about working harder. It's about working different. It's not about doing more hours, but being consistent and intentional in the hours that you work, 120 minutes a day. You're going to learn that we're going to work to a 12-week year. So we're going to have four opportunities in the year to help you achieve your goals. And we're going to get into that in our how-to uh, training videos on how we are going to help you build your business, the day-to-day, minute-by-minute playbook. It's not about focusing on world records, but personal best every single day. One of the biggest challenges that I see in the industry is people are always comparing themselves to other people, being discouraged um, by other, what other people achieve. And one thing you hear me say often is that you know somebody may be perceptionally doing better than you um, faster, but they may only be wanting to build a swimming pool, whereas you're trying to build an ocean. So we don't want to let someone else's swimming pool discourage us from the ocean that we are trying to build. And you can only do that by keeping your eyes fixed on what you're doing and improving your personal best every single day. It's not about focusing on the results, it's about focusing on the actions. What are the critical actions that are gonna help you produce the results that you want? We're gonna measure success by the actions that you take, not by the results that you produce. Because if you take the right actions, and you're gonna do that with our 10 core commitments, then you are going to get the results that you are looking for. If you don't have it in habit, you don't have it. So the goal is to develop our 10 core commitments in a way that you don't even have to think about them every single day. You just know that in your 120 minutes of working your business, you know exactly what your intention is and how to go about achieving that. No different to putting your socks on in the morning. You don't have to think about which foot goes in first. You just do it. So that's what we're referring to here. If you don't have it in habit, you don't have it. And it's a quote that I love from Eben Pagan. Uh, in the industry, there are over 30 million distributors. 97% of them are earning less than $93,000 per year. And 3% are earning more than $97,000 per month. And so you can see that something has to shift in order for you to become part of the 3%. Uh, um, I'm guessing you don't really want to be part of the 97%, so you want to be part of the 3%, something has to shift. And what that is, is your paradigms. And paradigms are nothing more than your conditioning, which is a collection of habits that have been formed in your subconscious over a long period of time, in fact, when you were very young. And so we have to make some paradigm shifts about how we perceive money, uh, monthly income, 
annual income, weekly and daily income, in order to be able to believe that you can actually do this. Um, and you're going to see that this will come into play a lot more when you understand the numbers that we want to help you achieve in your business. And when the paradigm shifts, the system is going to work. I heard Mark Yarnell, who is a very successful network marketer uh, for many years, talk about that. You know, you can make a paradigm shift. When you make the paradigm shift, then the system will work. So now I want you to go ahead and watch uh, Cliff Young's story. And as you watch the story, I want you to see what is possible. All right, so I'm going to leave you to watch Cliff's story, and I'll see you on the other side. Oprah Winfrey said, you don't get what you want, you get what you believe. Beliefs are the it. And I'll tell you my favorite belief story. I met this guy, he just died a couple years ago, he uh, was 81, but when he was 61, he shows up in Sydney, Australia for a race that's 850 kilometers, a little over 600 miles. And everybody there is like 20, 30, it's an extreme race, it's six and a half day race. And they're all dressed in their Nike, Puma, Asics, Reebok running gear. They're all looking pretty young and fit. And here's a 61-year-old guy wearing Oshkosh overalls, a t-shirt, a baseball cap, construction boots, and galoshes because he thought it might rain. <laughs> and they're all going, old man, what are you doing here? I'm running a race. You ever run a race before? Nope. You're starting with a six and a half day race? Yep. Why? I was free on my schedule and I always wanted to run a race. What makes you think you can do this? Do you ever run a marathon? No. Do you ever have any training? No. Do you ever work with a coach? No. Well, I'm a farmer, and I have to chase my animals around because I don't have a tractor or a horse. And I herd them. Some days the storm's coming in, and i got to run over here and get the cows. And I, just, I might be out there for 24 hours. I think I can run. So the race starts, and they all take off, and they're, all, and they're really fast. And here's Cliff, like this. <laughs> they later dubbed it the Cliff Young Shuffle. See, but Cliff had an advantage that nobody knew. Cliff had never had a coach, never talked to an elite runner, never understood anything about long distance running, had never read a book on it, never read Runner's World. And so he didn't know you're supposed to run for 18 hours and sleep for six. So that night when everyone was so far ahead of him, they went to bed, he was so far behind him, he didn't know it. That night he just ran right by him. And Cliff ran nonstop for five and a half days, never sleeping, and broke the record by 12 hours. 61 years old. You reckon you'll make it all right? No worries. With this team behind me, I'll make it all right. Make it. We've been practically there now. But I'm fairly fresh. If there's a good sort around, I'll take her out, I ring. Do you reckon you'll be ready for a good sort when you get to Melbourne? Yeah, well, I'm bloody oath. There's plenty down there too, isn't it? I'm going to have a shower in Melbourne, you know, and clean my teeth. I haven't cleaned my teeth since the run started. Couldn't find any water. Well, I'm you to start off in a black jacket, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> you haven't got time, really. Uh, going to have a shower and a shave, and what's that other thing starts with S? <laughs> Over three, I think. Day five. More rain and 175 kilometres of solitude. A record is broken. Joe record. Demoralised, he's caught by Purden. By now, they're 50 kilometres behind, and Cliff is showing the stamina of a Zulu warrior. Can't beat the other one, Blake. What? Can't beat the other one, Blake. No. Okay. Yeah. Hey, good. Pretty good, now. Still strong. Yeah. Come, Morgan. Tonight? Yeah, about uh, 11 o'clock, perhaps. Around about 11. Yeah, see you in Melbourne about 11, I hope. Can you go straight through? Yeah, only stop now and again like this, a bit of food and change shoes, that's better. Won't stop for long, won't rest, I don't think. No time to rest. And they thought they were coming up behind. <laughs> you got to go hard, it's need to keep them back. So why did you go to the front so early? Oh, I like the front position. I see, I let them, the first day I let them run themselves out and then I took the lead at night time. And I've held the lead ever since. I don't mind the front, if I can get a good break about yeah, you know, too strong in here. 20 or 30 kilometres, you can sort of gauge it, you can relax when you get a good lead and then when they start to come out again. It's not bad. Well, the other blokes have trained for months and done all the science. What's your secret, do you reckon? Oh, well. You've just got to keep going, I think. 
you can't relax, you've got to keep the pressure on. You, you can't, uh, it's not easy, it's, it's tough, it's a tough run. The pressure's there all the time. What's, what sort of runner would you say you are then? Oh, I've got no experience. Born and bred, out in the bush runner. <laughs> One of the old, old style runners. That's about it. No signs. No, I just hit this in our mouth for this one. Now, when I say elite sportsman, you automatically think of a 61-year-old potato farmer wearing gumboots, don't you? Sometimes you have events that sort of uh, tickle a nation's funny bone or something grabs their attention. And with Cliff Young, it sort of it appealed to us on so many different levels. And he used to run in gumboots. He was the worst dressed sports person we've ever had. These days, of course, you know, Nike would have been there getting very special slick gumboots. Cliff Young was, as his name suggested, young at heart. He embodied the never-say-die attitude that many aspire to, but few achieve. What the interesting thing about Cliff Young is, is that he wanted to do it. And it was remarkable what he did. I mean, he didn't cheat. He actually did it. Oh, it's been a pretty tough run. The hills all the way. To here, anyway. And day after day, Cliffy Young, the Cliff Young shuffle, and the whole nation fell in love with him. Incredibly, at age 61, Cliff became the oldest marathon winner, and he took two days off the previous Sydney to Melbourne race record. Do you think that you're going to make it all the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. I'm going to run all night tonight, and I hope to finish tomorrow. Tomorrow night, sometime. And he streeted the field. He just ripped them wide open. Kept going to Melbourne. If they hadn't stopped him, he would have finished in Perth. Cliff was awarded the first prize of $10,000. He promptly gave two grand to each of the five other runners and kept nothing for himself. An impressive and generous man, that Cliff. Now that you're ready to make a paradigm shift, head back over to the team training platform and then I want you to click on TAR paradigm shift. This is where we're going to access the 12 week training, um, which will probably go for 24 weeks because we're going to um, have both mindset and strategy training every week. We're going to change it up every week to keep you moving forward and once you're here I want you to scroll all the way down so the video will start playing immediately I'll just pause it for now but let the video play there's a message there from Bob Proctor and I want you to scroll all the way down to lesson number 12 magnifying the mind and I want you to watch this lesson first okay so you hello see. this is Sandy Gallagher welcome back to lesson 12 of thinking into results all right and um don't worry about doing the action steps for now. I just want you to listen to that message and then prepare to show up for the weekly training, which you'll be able to access um, here uh, to where we're going to provide coaching on each one of the lessons uh, to help you get through. And uh, I'm going to do a separate video to explain exactly how to get the most value from this weekly training. All right. I look forward to seeing you on the weekly training. Take care and bye for now.